Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video. And in this video, I wanted to take another look at the upcoming Orbiter 2015 beta. And just kind of get into a little bit of gameplay. Kind of mess around a little bit, see what things look like. And in order to do that, I put a standard Delta Glider here on the moon. And I've kind of done things a little different. I sort of hacked up my Orbiter beta install so that I could have the traditional landing sites of the Apollo missions on on the moon. Now there's no bases there, of course, because when the uh, Apollo missions landed, they were just landing, you know, at geographically interesting spots, but there was no bases there, obviously. So we don't have bases and targets and things like that. Um, other than just points on a map. So let me just go ahead and switch camera views here, jump into it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, first of all, let's go to the external camera just for a moment. So here I am. This is the, according to, according to the AMZO directory, this is the, uh, or rather, according to the AMZO add-on, this was the landing site uh, called Copernicus. Let me kind of scroll the camera to actually let me just switch to this view and let me reference the moon and you can see that there we have these uh, let me zoom in a little bit we have you know uh, what is it about a half dozen landing sites and I'm at this one and I the only reason I chose it is because it was the first one on the list so you can see we've got Copernicus uh, and the rest of these which I won't try to pronounce because I'll mess them up and sound really stupid so as my target I'm going to pick one of the other ones and let's just go to I believe, yeah, Framora is uh, is not too far away. It's only 400 kilometers away, so that's not too bad. Whereas if I were to try to go to one of these, we'd be looking at more like a thousand kilometers. That's a little bit that's a little bit far for a, a simple hop. But again, as I look at the external camera, you can see we don't have a landing pad here. Um, logically, you know there weren't there weren't bases built on the moon then or now in fact so if we were to go back to the moon today there would still be no base but as we look around we can see you know the terrain which is nice and that's why i thought this might be kind of fun to do it might be worthwhile to warp time forward a little bit though maybe get the sun up so let me start by doing that because i don't know how well the blackness will show up in the video playback. It actually looks kind of cool here, but it might be too dark for video. So let's have sun, let's have the sun up. Let's have it right, right overhead. So something like that. My only issue there is now things kind of look too whited out, but I guess maybe it's better than, than the darkness. I don't know, you guys can tell me. So we're basically kind of in a bowl, if you kind of look here, if I zoom the camera out. Um, and then there is this kind of odd uh, tile here that seems to be kind of floating in the air. Yeah, you can see that in the video playback. I'm not sure what that's all about, so we'll just have to ignore that. But otherwise, you can see we're kind of in this crater, you know, that big crater on the moon. So let's zoom in on our location and jump in and go to one of the other landing sites and just see how that plays out. So again, I've got that targeted and 416 kilometers, and you can see it's mostly due south. So what I'm going to do is lift up off uh, the, the lunar surface here. I almost said lift up off the landing pad because I'm so used to saying that. But we're going to lift up off the surface, rotate to about not quite 180 degrees. It looks like we need more, about like 165, something like that. And we're going to fly mostly due south and uh, see if we can touch down somewhere in this location. And then again, there won't be a specific landing pad, so we'll just have to kind of pick some spot that looks good and land there. Let's zoom in a little bit on the location and track the location and there we go okay so I'm facing 330 so it'll be perhaps a little faster if I turn and to the left probably won't make a lot of difference now I do probably want to start by go ahead and turning on the level horizon autopilot because since we now have terrain the the wheels uh, tend to when you apply hover it tends to kind of tilt the vessel to the side and then lift up. Actually, let me not turn on the level horizon and maybe we'll see if that's the case. So I'm going to start by applying some hover and what I expect to happen instead of going straight up, what I expect to happen is one wheel is going to drop and then we're going to kind of go at a weird angle. So let's just see what happens here. 
However, yeah, you can see the nose actually dropped in this case. So now I'm going to turn on the level horizon to get everything centered. And actually over here, I want to bring up the surface and keep an eye on my vertical speed because I don't want to climb too much. Now, I don't really know, um, I don't even have really any way to know how large the hills are between here and here. So it's kind of interesting that if I just go straight forward at a, at a low altitude, I'll, I'll end up hitting the train, which is a fun new feature of Orbiter 2015 Beta. Uh, lifting up the landing gear, no need to have it down. We don't want to drag it across any hilltops. You can see I'm still climbing at about 40 meters per second. Go ahead and take out some of that hover. Rotation. Switch to rotation, and now we're going to rotate so that we're mostly facing south. Probably a little more rotation than I needed. And here, this is purely just a fun fictional thing. No concern whatsoever about using too much fuel or whatever. This is purely, purely for fun. Okay, so now we're facing what I think is probably the right direction. So I'm going to go... Uh, full power on the main, so we do have a ways to go, so let's just go forward quickly. If I only coast forward at a few meters per second, it'll take a really long time to get over there, and I don't want to take that much time. So we'll go... Uh, we'll pick a number here, something that sounds good. Although, you know what I should do? Let me cancel for now. We are going, we are going this direction, but before I put in too much velocity in that direction, I kind of want to make sure I'm pointing the right way first, because I don't want to... Um, accidentally point this way because obviously with no atmosphere or anything like that I can't glide myself into proper into proper alignment so let's uh, let me bring up base sync which is one of the MFDs that is actually working in in 2050 and the other thing I want to do is turn on the altitude hold so that I'm not uh, constantly climbing at that 40 meters per second so I'm going to target uh, Fra Mora. Does anyone know how to pronounce that? Fra Mora. <laughs> Fra Mora. And it looks like, uh, yeah, okay, with my current, let's go, with my current heading, I'm actually going to miss it by 32 kilometers. That's not terrible, but not ideal. So there's no radio beacon there, I don't believe. There wouldn't be. Let's uh, control I. It wouldn't make sense that there would be. But let's just take a quick look. Let's see, they'll probably be down on the bottom of the list for Mora. Okay, well, that's a bit odd. They, he, he, Whoever created this, uh, or rather I should say the guy that created the add-on did actually include a radio beacon at the location. That seems a bit of a strange choice, but we'll take advantage of it. Let me uh, select, bring up the comm nav, although I forgot to remember what frequency that was. Because the reason I say it's an odd choice is because I, I doubt there was a radio beacon there when they landed originally back, you know, in the late 60s, 70s, or early 70s, unless maybe they sent some radio transmitter ahead. I don't know. Does anybody know the historical facts on that? Okay, so we're going to go to 113... Uh, 113.20. And this will just let me... Yeah, you'll see. So I'll bring up VOR, VTOL. So you can see now, with having the radio frequency information, I can get a better indicator as to which direction I'm heading versus where I need to be going. So currently I'm heading a little bit too far, I guess, east. And you'll note here too that since I've got the attitude or the altitude hold on, what it's doing, it's actually continually adjusting my altitude based on the terrain below me. So actually, let me turn that off, and let's just kind of descend a little bit. But because we now have height to take into consideration, when the altitude hold autopilot does its job, it won't keep you at a constant, uh, you know, say two kilometers above the the sphere of the mesh. Rather, it'll keep you at a constant two kilometers above the highest peak that you're currently over and that's going to change constantly because you can see right now I'm coming up over a small hillside it's not a lot of definition there so it's a little hard to see but then I'm kind of dipping down into a valley well two kilometers above this point is higher than it is above here and then of course you can see now I'm dipping down um, actually gonna get into a problem here so let me uh, 1, that's actually a huge problem I might actually crash uh, it looks like we're gonna be okay but that was really close <laughs> So that's just one of the things to now 
worry about with with, with Orbiter 2015, which I, and I and I love it. I think it's great to finally have terrain now, but it is uh, it is a, a big change versus Orbiter 2010. One thousand. So, now I'm coming up over that peak. You can see as long as my velocity vector is above the, the the hill, then I'll be fine. Okay. Anyway, what I was getting at here. And uh, let's go ahead and lock our altitude about a kilometer there. What I was getting at here is that since I'm going this way and my base location's over there, I need to I need to make an adjustment. Now, I think the what best way to make that adjustment is going to be there's a couple of options I can rotate, and since I'm since I'm only going at 200 meters a second, I think what I want to do is rotate this way. And if I go to basically 90 degrees off set from the direction I'm going, it'll require the least amount of fuel in order to get into alignment. So if I go exactly to 90 degrees to the location I'm trying to go to, then keep in mind that because there's no atmosphere, I'm still going forward even though my vessel's sideways. But I want to be 90 degrees to the location, which would be right there which is the green arrow not the yellow arrow but the green now if I apply thrust in this direction let me just make sure I'm thinking correctly I believe it'll bring my yellow arrow around is that, is that right yeah so now I'm facing now I'm going exactly toward the location now I can bring my vessel back around to bring my vessel back around to uh, to where this green and yellow is now facing forward which means I'm heading exactly toward the target location and that is what I want and that's why I am using this VOR VTOL because it allows me to make that um, determination more simply than than just arbitrarily guessing All right now um, altitude holds doing its job now, it, it probably is the case that the altitude hold isn't going to be sufficient, sufficiently sophisticated. Still some graphical glitches there you can see. Isn't going to be sufficiently sophisticated to keep you, keep your altitude under control if you're going too fast. And what I mean is if I'm traveling at, say, a thousand meters a second forward, and I'm coming up onto a hillside, and say I'm only at 900 meters, and let's say the peak of that hill is uh, four kilometers. As I get closer to that hill, and the and the and the terrain starts increasing, the altitude hold autopilot's going to kick in, but it's going to be too slow. It's not going to get me up to four kilometers in time, so I'll end up crashing into the hill. So you still have to pay attention to those sorts of things. We're 300 kilometers from the destination, so we need to go faster. So I'm putting in full power on the main. Going to lock that. And I don't want to climb too high because then we don't get the thrill, so to speak, of seeing the terrain. But on the other hand, I don't want to be too low because I might end up running into that problem where I can't increase my altitude quickly enough to get over top of a hill. So I got to keep an eye on the forward view to make sure that the velocity vector isn't pointing into the base of the hillside or that would be a big problem. Watching the velocity here. And I know that orbital velocity around the moon, again, is about 1,800 meters a second. So I don't necessarily want to get up to that kind of speed. But at the same time, this is quite a bit of distance to cover. So I want to get, let me just choose 1,000 meters a second. And that's just a purely random figure. And then we're going to kill the main engines here in just a moment. Okay, we'll go with that. So now we're heading toward the Framora landing site here. And I just want to keep in mind that somewhere around, well, depending if I use main engines or retro engines, if I use main engines, then I need to begin my braking somewhere around, you know, 50 kilometers or something like that. But I'm probably going to use retro. So let me, let me switch over to the 2D view panel for a moment and open the retro doors. One thing I've noted is that this switch doesn't the the graphic doesn't work so if I open you can hear the audio but the switch still indicates that it's closed so there's some kind of bug there but we can verify that it's open by switching to the external camera 
and taking a look here, and you can see that it's open. I wonder if anybody knows about that yet. Maybe I should report that on Orbiter Forum that that graphic isn't working. In fact, I bet all these switches are not working right now. Let's look at, for example, radiator. Yeah, see the radiator switch, it's not working either. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's functional, but it's just not, the visual isn't working. Okay, back to the uh, big view here. We're 200 kilometers out, still traveling at 1,000 meters a second, heading down currently because the velocity vector is below that center line, so I know I'm going down. And I don't know what the altitude hold is actually set at. That's one thing that I've never given a lot of consideration to, but it's kind of a missing thing in orbiter. It doesn't, when you choose to hold your altitude, there's nothing to indicate what your altitude is being held at. But I remember it was somewhere around a kilometer. And let's take a look. So if we were a thousand meters above the moon, it might look something like that. A thousand meters. Yeah, one kilometer. Come back to the forward view here so I can keep an eye on where I'm going. Now, since I am going to be using the less powerful retro engines, I'm going to start slowing things down now just to be on the safe side. Yeah, you can see that's really slow. And I don't have a I don't have burn time calculator working. I the old version might work. I haven't tried it, but the new version by Enjo with the mo message moduling system, I have not had any luck getting that to work in Orbiter 2015 beta. So in other, in other words, I don't know exactly when to begin braking. I don't have anything to do that calculation for me. So we're down to 900 meters a second. We might be slowing down a little bit too soon, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to go ahead and bring the velocity down quite a bit. And while the braking maneuver is happening there, I'm going to look outside again, take, a, enjoy, take in the terrain, enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, I do think that having the sun up is probably a bit better because it would be too dark otherwise. Down to, set, you know what, I bet you I didn't. I'm going to have to turn around. So I'm going to kill this engine. Translation, rotation. And I'm going to have to rotate backwards because we're not going to slow down quickly enough using the retro okay. engines. But that also means I can wait longer to begin braking. So I had to switch over to the orbit so that I would know where that center position is at. Because when you have the surface HUD, you can't tell where, where retrograde is at. Let's go ahead and zoom in more. See, we're coming up on our location here in 50 kilometers. Now, if I were traveling at orbital velocity, I would need to have already begun my braking burn by now, but we're not at orbital velocity. We're much slower, so I'm guessing I can wait till you know, I'm a bit slower yet. Now, there's not going to be anything to look at necessarily when I get there. Again, there's not going to be a base. There's not going to be any, like, congratulations, you are here. It's just going to be a point on the ground that I'm aiming for. So, let's see here. I'm going to say 25 kilometers, I'll begin braking. So distance is now 26 and 25. Let's break. I don't know if that was soon enough or not. We'll find out. Looks like it probably was. 1,000. Down to 14 kilometers. little bit of a graphical glitch there. Again, there's just that tile that seems to be floating in the air. Down to 300 meters a second velocity, and down to 6.5 kilometers out from the target location. So yeah, I'd say that timing was pretty good. 
can probably even back off the main engine now. Yeah, let's back off because we're we still have four kilometers to go. Slow down a bit more. Three kilometers to go. And this tile that you're seeing, I will explain that in a moment. We have about two kilometers to go to be at the center of the landing site. Let's zoom in a bit. So actually we're all the way zoomed in. And let's break some more. Okay, now the rest of this I can handle with just uh, translation. translation and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate around to prograde. Actually, I don't need to have that view up. I can just use this this map here to let me know. So we're going to be pointing more or less at the center of the landing site here. And I'm slow enough now that I can use translation to correct. Translation. Do a little bit of correction on the, uh, the exact direction that I'm heading. And not that it matters too much because there's no specific landing spot, but I'd like to get a little closer to that traditional landing site. Rotation. So let's rotate around. Mm, a little more forward movement. I do have the retro doors open, so I can use those to slow down. Turned off the at altitude hold. And I'm just letting myself descend a little bit. I'm going to put the landing gear down before I forget. 800 meters from that landing side. Oh, there's a thing up there. I wonder what that is. Letting myself descend. Got to be a little careful not to go too quickly, but... Graphical glitch. Sometimes if I zoom in and out and change the camera angle around a little bit, it'll fix it, but apparently it's not going to fix it at the moment. 300 meters to the center of that landing site. And I'll begin slowing down now. Okay, we'll Translation. go with something like that. That's pretty close. And now I'll let myself descend a little faster. So this floating tile that you see here, that's kind of an odd spot, that comes from the AMZO, the, the Apollo add-on, basically. I went ahead and added that add-on to my orbiter beta so that I could have these landing positions. And it also apparently put those tiles in, but those tiles are no longer compatible with the new version of orbiter, so that's why we're having some oddities there in the graphics. Five hundred. Five hundred meters above the ground. Is that working now? Oh nope, still got the weird black graphical glitch. Two hundred. A little bit of hover to offset the descent. 100 50 40 30 meters 30. to go Almost on the ground. Going to go ahead and bring the vertical speed down under a meter. Going to turn off the level horizon so that it doesn't bounce around when I touch the ground. Let's 
seven meters. Just using translation now. Nice soft touchdown. And there we are. We're on the ground. Awesome. So that is a free flight from one landing site to another from the Apollo days. And I just thought that would be kind of fun to try now that we have a little bit of terrain and orbiter. Get a little bit of get a little bit of footage or a little bit more viewing of the gameplay aspect. So if you like this video, hit the like button, and if for some reason you didn't like it, that's okay too. Thumbs down. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, what do you think of Orbiter 2015? Are you excited about it? Are you looking forward to it? And leave all your thoughts about that. Check for uh, links in the description down below, and I will see you in the next video.